Now I know that the round of 16 and match day four is still a little while away yet, but I feel like there's already plenty to talk about and get our teeth sunk into. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about players to buy and avoid ahead of match day four and the round of 16. So before I, I actually talk about some players, I think there are some general top tips to be aware of before you know deciding on what to do with your team, players to bring in, etc. For me, my number one tip that I want to put across is pick your team or a team you think would suit the round of 16 as soon as possible. Once this match day three deadline has passed, which has already happened, player prices are going to be adjusted based upon their performances. So we need to be picking players now that you think will will you know get through to the round of 16 ahead of when they actually play for their prices to be adjusted does that make sense so you can make like early punts on players you think are likely going to go up in price and that should allow you to pick a team basically for cheaper than you might do when it gets on to, to later in the match day and towards the round of 16 so for me i've picked an 11 well 15 players that i think were pretty much there to be honest for the round of 16 just ahead of the price rises coming in so that's a top tip for you right now. I would also say just generally it's basic, but you've got to pick players you think will go far in the tournament, right? We get a decent amount of transfers as we go through the match days, but you know, ultimately you're going to be wanting pick, to pick players you think are going to go far in the tournament. I'd also say in terms of price rises, etc., just be careful around the player prices that you're picking. What you don't want to be is absolutely loaded up on say 4 million defenders, for example, because if they get knocked out, there's going to be a real lack of players at that price, I would imagine, that go really far into the tournament. So you know, just be careful. Try and pick a balanced structure. Maybe have one of the most expensive players in each position um, in your team. And that will allow you to downgrade them and upgrade. You, you can see, sort of see the, the thinking behind that. Just be careful with player prices in team structure. I would also say, yes, you could definitely chuck in a few differentials. But the spine of your team, in my mind should be the top players, right? Popular players in the game, I'm thinking, you know, I'll talk about them in, in more detail, but Mbappe, Bruno Fernandes, Mittelstadt, players like that, for example, that are already really popular in the game. I don't see any reason to avoid them. I'd say you make up the difference in this game in the other players you have on the periphery. So say you've got so nine to 10 really strong, good assets in your team that are probably quite popular. And then the rest of your team can be differentials that you think you know, not many other people have and could propel you up the leaderboard. But for me, I think the downside of not having a really potentially really strong asset in your team and then not performing is much greater than the upside of um, yeah, them not performing and you having a differential, if that makes sense. It's just my way of playing the game. Um, ultimately, it seems to you know, have worked out so far. But if in your opinion, you want to go different, then play it your way. But those would be my sort of four top tips for navigating the round of 16. Ultimately, I just wanted to talk about my top four players or top three, four players in each position that I would almost suggest are kind of shoe-ins for your team. Now, in terms of goalkeepers, you can only fit two in and I think there are four that are perfectly respectable and decent options. Mike Maignan of France, Diego Costa of Portugal, Unai Simon of Spain, and Jordan Pickford of England. Maignan and Simon are both five and a half million, Costa and Pickford both five. So save a bit of cash, go for Costa and Pickford. I want to spend a bit more Maignan and Simon. I would say I would want to pick a goalkeeper that I expect to get to the final. I wouldn't really want to be using too many of my transfers in any fantasy football game in reality on my goalkeeper. I would probably pick Jordan Pickford and possibly Diogo Costa. I think these two probably have a decent chance of going far in the tournament and they're 5 million cheaper than the other two. I would have included Neuer in here, but he's a little bit more expensive than any of these. And I also think there are better German players than going for their goalkeeper. I'm personally really impressed by Germany and I think they'll go far in the tournament. But probably avoid picking Neuer just because I think you can do better and triple up on Germany in other positions. Right then, so I would say my top defenders or shoe-in defenders are probably these four. Cucurella has been really, really impressive so far at this tournament. He's been like a different player at left back for Spain. And yeah, it's obviously favoured by the Spain manager. He could well get a rest in match day three. Yeah, Spain, you know, pretty well, they are already through, right? 
I think he's going to start in the round of 16 and is a good option. And only four and a half million, you know, I think he's he's probably the best four and a half million defender in the game. Mittelstadt, I think Germany are looking like one of the strongest contenders to win the whole thing. He's looking pretty attacking for his team on the left-hand side of defence. And at four million, you know, before you know the price rises, etc., can't deny him as a good option, right? And you know, he was popular in the lead up to to this sort of stage of the competition. And he's going to be popular afterwards. He's four million. I wouldn't think twice. And I think he's one of those players that yes, everyone's probably going to have him, but he's one of those players you don't really want to be without. Mark Gahey again. I do expect England to get relatively far in this tournament. They've been a little bit disappointing so far, but Gahey has been a really good performer for England. England historically, and they've only conceded one goal at the time of recording this in the tournament so far. Historically, they've been good defensively as well. Okay, he seems to have been pretty good for ball recoveries as well. So clean sheets, ball recoveries, potential. He could even get some man of the match awards in there if England perform well defensively. So again, four and a half million. I probably just prefer Cucurella for the attacking upside, but Gahey is a really good option as well. And then Jules Kunde of France. Now, I would probably say... Teo Hernandez, if money was no object, is probably my favourite France defender. But Jules Koundé playing at right back seems to be almost just as attacking, basically, as Teo Hernandez in the games that I've seen. And he's 0.5 million cheaper. Absolutely locked on, locked into that French defence. Sorry, nailed on for that French defence, right? I think he's going to play every game. France are undoubtedly one of the strongest teams in the tournament. And one thing I'd say about France is they look so strong defensively. They've got Kante in front of a back four of Kunde, Saliba, Upamecano, Teo Hernandez, and a really good goalkeeper in Maignan, right? So I think they're going to be really frugal defensively, and Kunde is going to be a really good option. Midfielders then, and I've got three that I think are pretty much locks, for my team at least at the moment. Bruno Fernandes, Ilkay Gundogan, and Rodri. Bruno Fernandes, I think, is probably the best midfielder in the Euros game. You know, Portugal... I think they're going to go far in the competition, at least get to the semi-finals in my mind. Yeah, I just can't deny Bruno Fernandes is a good option. He's going to play every minute of every game in the knockouts for Portugal, as long as he doesn't get injured, of course. You know, yes, he will not be on penalties if Ronaldo's on the pitch, etc. But regardless of that, he's got a wonderful record for Portugal in the lead up to this competition. And I just think Portugal are kind of growing into the tournament. So I still think Bruno Fernandes is one of the better midfielders in the game. Ilkay Gundogan has been playing really well this tournament. Yes, Musiala and Verts are good options too. But if you're looking on price alone, why not go for Gundogan? He's cheaper, probably better for ball recoveries. I'd say Verts, Musiala and Gundogan are probably all equal in terms of chances of attacking returns, etc. And I know Germany had a penalty in the opening game against Scotland that uh, Havertz took. Should have been Gundogan that took it, really. I do think I would give him the benefit of the doubt on that one and still suggest he's the number one penalty taker for Germany. I think he probably didn't take that penalty against Scotland because well, he was injured from the challenge. So, yeah, give him the benefit of the doubt, and I think Gundogan is a really good option. Now, Rodri, he's not at the best tournament in terms of fantasy football so far, but I wouldn't let that put me off going for him as an option. I still think he's going to be good. He could potentially get some man of the match rewards out there, Good for ball recoveries, likely on penalties for Spain. I just think there are so many upsides to him as an option, even though he hasn't necessarily performed well so far this tournament. I get that you might disagree with me on Rodri, but yeah, I think still he's a really good option. This is a bit boring, I'll admit, but in reality on the forwards, I can't look past going for the three big guys of Cristiano Ronaldo, Kylian Mbappe and Harry Kane. All three, the talisman for their nations on penalties, just can't look past him in my opinion. I think Mbappe is going to be fine. I think he probably plays match day three to be honest because France need to win and then he'll be fine for the group, uh, for the round of 16, sorry. Harry Kane, yes, he was a little bit disappointing in the England game against Denmark. I just don't see a way that he doesn't start for England. Gareth Southgate's going to rely on him. I think they're going to play a, you know, kind of a, a player with a bit of pace alongside Kane, which I think he will thrive off of. And Historically, he grows into tournaments, right, does Harry Kane, and I think that we could see that happen again here. And then Ronaldo, I don't need to say any more about him. One of the best players in history, absolute talisman for Portugal, a team that I do expect to get relatively far in this tournament, at least in my mind, to the semi-finals. I genuinely think all three of these teams could progress to the semis. That means, you know, if you pick these three, they're probably going to be in your team for a while without you needing to transfer them out. They're good options. I'd say one more player on the periphery that i consider two is Kai Havertz. I don't think he's quite of the level of these three, but if you're looking to save a bit of cash, you know, he is significantly cheaper at seven and a half million. I do think likewise Germany probably get to the, at least the semi-finals as well. 
So yeah, Kai Havertz is a good option too. But in terms of forwards, I'd say these three are the outstanding options. Lukaku, I was saying he was great for the group stages. I'm just questioning how far Belgium actually get into the tournament. So yes, Lukaku is a great option. I'm just not sure how long he's going to be sticking around in your team, you know, once the knockouts begin. So yeah, those are the three main forwards I'd be looking at. All right, and that's the end of the video. I'm very conscious that, you know, things haven't been decided in terms of the last hit 16 yet. We don't exactly know who's through from the groups, but I think some of the players I've mentioned there and some of the top tips are still very valid and fairly safe bets, right, to get through. Now, I just wanted to say this might be my last video on Euro 2024 Fantasy for about a week. I'm off to a music festival on Tuesday. I'm going to leave Tuesday afternoon. And during that time, quite a lot of the round 16 is going to be played out and I'm going to be at a festival. So unfortunately, I'm not going to have access to a laptop or camera. I'm not going to be in my house to uh, to record. So what I will do is I will post some updates on my team just by the community post feature on YouTube. And I will probably do the same on Twitter as well. So I'll still have phone reception and still be playing the game while I'm there. I just won't be able to make videos, unfortunately. So one of my reasons for getting this video out is I just wanted to give you guys some advice and tips, basically, before I did go away. Yes, things aren't decided yet, but I still think like this. I still feel like this video, sorry, should be useful to you. If you thought it was, please leave me a like rating. You can subscribe to the Golden Gold channel, which should be just there on your screen. Let me know in the comments who your locked in players are for the round of 16. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in my next video.